Hey, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Today, I'm joined with the CEO of Cohere Health, Siva. It's great to have you on. Wonderful, Jared. I'm, uh, I'm excited for us to have the opportunity to talk. Uh, I think we should kick things off. If you give the audience a quick background on yourself, and then we'll talk more about Cohere Health and some of the things you wanted, uh, you and I wanted to discuss here today. Wonderful. Yeah, I've been in, uh, I'm a software engineer by training and have been in the healthcare technology industry for more than 25 years now. And um, I worked in uh, many of the large corporations that do technology, you know, for healthcare. The last one um, is actually the one uh, I, f- I actually co-founded. It's called um, like CO Health Analytics, a company that I started in 2008 uh, focused on analytics for health plans. And it was a very successful one funded by uh, some of the large venture capital firms like Sequoia Health Enterprise Partners. And we had 30 of the largest health plans in the country. And I was a CEO and managed to actually uh, grow the company quite fast and had an exit in uh, 2018. Uh, so that's pretty much my background, um, you know, being an entrepreneur, I would say for the last, uh, 16 or 17 years, uh, starting in, you know, companies in the healthcare space. And, uh, you're located in the Boston area, correct? Yes. I'm, yes. I'm located in the Boston. Area. Cool. That's right. Right from, uh, right around where I, where I was before I made the move down to Florida. So, um, I like where I'm at during this time of the year, much better than where you're at this time of the year, but it's, you're in a cool, you're in a really nice area, uh, 90% of the time, right? Winter is not so friendly there though. I will say that. Yeah. Winter is not friendly, but you know, we are getting used to it and, uh, it's just, uh, you just that the, um, you know, it all depends on, uh, whether it is a very heavy snow or light snow, light snow, we are used to it only heavy snow, which is, Still infrequent, I would say, compared to other parts of the country, which get uh, which get days of Absolutely. snow. Absolutely, yeah. It's 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 usually a one off day, and then you have a little little time in between the next storm, which is nice. Yeah. Well, uh, there there is something, Siva, that I ask everyone that comes on as a guest. Uh, it's if you could go through for Cohere Health quickly the why, how, what of the company. Uh, I always like to to focus in on those three things based on Simon X. People care about you know why you do what you do how you do it, and then, you know, then what you do. Uh, so I'd love to hear that from you. And then there's a couple things you and I want to talk to today, really kind of focusing in on prior authorization and uh, some of the other, uh, some other questions. Sure. Um, uh, we, um, you know, what do, we, uh, you know, uh, why do we do it? Like what we do? If you look at the world of healthcare, I don't have to kind of preach uh, to the audience here. It is a highly complex process. And, in fact, uh, COVID probably even more exposed uh, the uh, you know the issues with uh, with the with the healthcare industry. Uh, when you kind of look at it, the ad, you know there are quite a bit of administrative processes that the healthcare uh, industry depends on, and one of the processes is uh, called uh, prior authorization. It's also called uh, you, you know utilization management. Um, in short, it is a process that is typically used by uh, the health plans or by the government, whoever is paying for it, or employers, to make sure that the uh, health care that is utilized by, their, by the patients and the members is right and it is safe. So it is a mechanism for them to ensure that uh, there are not of unnecessary procedures and if uh, if those procedures are uh, being ordered appropriately, the units and all of that. And uh, so it's kind of a, you call a check and balance, right? With respect to the, uh, between the uh, physician, uh, the hospitals, and also the people who pay for it, who are the health plans and uh, employers and uh, government. Uh, this process has been around for 25, 30 years, but nothing has changed in the process. It has kind of, uh, it runs on legacy systems. There is a lot of paperwork that goes back and forth. Um, you know, the providers, you know, right after they see a patient, they need to fill out like forms. They need to go to a couple of websites and they have a staff that goes and tells them that hey, this particular person 
needs a knee surgery and for that they might need a MRI first and they make the request to a health plan and the health plan might immediately approve it or they, they have up to 7 to 14 days to be able to approve it because health plan, they go through the process and make sure that this is possible, etc. I think, um, and because of the lack of, I would say, electronic um, uh, uh, interfaces and also there is a lot of back and forth and as we probably know, healthcare itself is highly complex. This uh, process, which got started as a pretty simple one that is done for about 2 to 3% of the procedures, is now pretty much done for about 80% of the procedures that are required. Um, um, if you look at a, a surgeon that is doing knee surgery or orthopedic surgeon, about 80% of the services might be might have to go through this process. Uh, so that is the what. And what we are doing is we are using um, A, uh, the latest and greatest digital technologies. Uh, B, we are using behavioral economics uh, to really kind of make sure that we lead the, you know, we kind of provide the right answers to them so that we can get the physicians to answer the questions pretty fast. And we are also trying to make sure that the quality is very high. So that's the uh, that's what we do. And what it has done for the industry right now is based on our clients is it has reduced the time that is taken to get an approval for a procedure, which is, I would say, uh, uh, like our median is zero because we can automatically approve it. Or, um, you know, if you kind of look at some of the things that we go through in four hours on an average, we can give them answers to everything back, which is a big change from uh, the current process that's uh, that can take anywhere between 12 hours and 14 days. Um, so that's a big benefit. The physicians love it because they are able to get the decisions pretty fast and they can schedule the surgeries or any procedures for the patients. And the patients are very thankful because uh, they can actually get to their next procedure pretty fast. And we also lay out the entire treatment plan for them. Otherwise, uh, they kind of return from the physician office saying that I don't know whether my procedure is going to get approved or not. I don't know what is the next step and all of that. We are able to provide all of that. And the third important thing is that it reduces the administrative burden on the um, uh, physician staff by over 30 to 35 percent right now. So that's kind of the benefits of, uh, you know, what we do. Yeah. And you, you able within that, you were able to kind of talk about, um, you know, in a way why why physicians like dislike this this process right and that was baked into your why because that's why you started the the company so um, exactly. yeah it's uh everyone i've talked to about prior prior authorization um it, they, they have a lot to say a, a lot to say about yeah. it so um so, yeah. so thank you for that that breakdown yeah in fact if you go and talk to the physicians they hate it um the one of the important the other aspects of why they don't uh, they also dislike is that they believe that the policies and the guidelines uh, which are pretty much dictated by the health plans and those are old guidelines and they don't think that it confirms to how they uh, what they learned or how they practice uh, so that is another uh, issue that they have with these guidelines, right? And uh, so uh, we have solved that by actually going to the societies that actually where these physicians are part of. And we are partnering with them and getting those latest policies and guidelines from them as opposed to depending on the health plan. And that is also another major uh, uh, issue they have. And that's another reason why they like, uh, you know, when they actually use our system. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and you were able to, this, this is one of the things I was going to ask you, but you were already able to go into this a little bit, right? How does your platform change that, that dynamic and, and those pain yeah. points for the physician? So I won't, I won't ask you that again, since you're able to, to go into that in some, some good detail. So thank you for that. Uh, what I do want to ask you though, is to kind of elaborate more on how how you're able to help like align health plans of physicians on basically an approved care plan uh, for for a whole episode of care. Okay, so that's a that's an excellent question. 
Um, first of all, I think um, we kind of our philosophy is that we respect uh, the, um, the the physician at the end of the day, and we are here to assist uh, the um, you know the physician because the physician is the one that knows the patient quite well, right? So that's the first thing that is, you know, is clear to everyone, right? Uh, so we are not here trying to replace their decision-making or et cetera. So when a physician actually looks at a particular, say, and uh, your procedure, uh, say that they might first want an MRI. And if the MRI indeed shows, say, some tear or so, they want to do arthroscopy on it. So once they say that I'm going to do arthroscopy, you have to determine whether it is done in an outpatient setting or you have to go into your hospital. And then what type of uh, wheelchair or what type of equipment do you need once you finish the arthroscopy? Do you need to go home or do you, do you have to be admitted in a, a rehabilitation facility, depending on how your house is, all of that. So th that's what constitutes a, a complete episode. So what happens is that the, we actually uh, make sure that a physician, and believe it or not, sometimes some physicians might say that, hey, this or we have taken this MRI six months back, and that showed something. So that's why we are going with it. We tell them that, no, we that's not a good idea. Immediately we tell them that, no, it's better to take a MRI right now because we can really figure out what is going on right now. So that's something that we do. That is one, right? Next is they when they want to go through the arthroscopy, uh, we said, fine, but what type of a place that you can actually go to? It's entirely possible that the physician is actually the patient does not have many risk factors. Only if a patient has a lot of risk factors, like um, high BP or uh, weight or smoking, you really want to put them in. That could be complications. So you do want to make sure that they go to a hospital for it. If not, um, there are a lot of ans you know ancillary, uh, you know they call it ASCs, like surgical centers that are available, which are much cheaper and where the patient can get in and get out faster compared to a hospital. So we kind of, uh, and what happens is sometimes the physician or the physician staff might not know that a physician can actually admit this patient in an outpatient where they are credentialed to do it. So we actually pinpoint it, uh, say that, oh, because we have the information, we tell them that, hey, it's better for this patient to be in this particular setting compared to that. So they kind of accept it. And then we actually say that based on the patient, what is the, the preference of the doctor is usually to, for the patient to go home. And because what happens is that if they go to a facility, usually the discharge, they might actually send them to a rehab without asking the, uh, uh, without asking the uh, physician. So we actually ask the physician what is their preference. And if they say it's home, we kind of approve the home. So the entire treatment, we are able to approve at the point of care when a patient comes. So the patient knows that, okay, the surgery is going to be scheduled for this day. This is when they can go out, go out, and this is when, if things go well, right? Obviously, you know, if not, then there is always exceptions to that. So that is the alignment we are talking about. So we don't question the judgment. We really help make sure that the cost for the patients is lower. And what they are doing is also correct. So, for example, another thing here is if they order some medication and if you think uh, if they order like, say, four units of something and we think that it's only appropriate to have only two based on the conditions, we tell them that, no, we are going to approve only two, not four because of this reason. So we are we, we take care of the patient, the safety of the patient and to and to and to ensure that they can actually go through the care really fast. Interesting. Yeah. And, and, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to, to see what you've, what you've built so far, what you guys are continuing to do, uh, with, with Cohair Health. And, uh, I, I just want to quickly say for, 
for you know our audience like this is the first episode so it's been great to have you on to talk more about uh what you're building and really the, the value that your customers are seeing and and also what you know basically what the benefits are so uh really appreciate you coming on the goal is to have you on again in the near future to talk about some other topics but uh this is really your intro episode where we go over uh the company and, and some some other topics but uh thank you again for your time today Wonderful, Jared. Really appreciate it and all insightful questions. And um, thanks for the opportunity.